Bonsoir. Can you hear me? Good. Welcome to Versefest 2021. Bienvenue au Festival Versefest 2021. Je m'appelle Hubert Lucier. Je suis président du conseil d'administration de Verse Ottawa. I'm the chair of Verse Ottawa, which is hosting Versefest for the 11th time. Je vais faire les présentations ce soir en même temps que Avonlea Fotheringham, qui se cache quelque part là-bas, qui est la nouvelle directrice de notre organisation. Avonlea Fotheringham will share the duty of presenting our artists tonight and welcoming you. She's our new director. She's been appointed a few months ago. She will succeed a person that you probably know all very well, Auntie Reed, who, although he's transiting out of his duty, has been still working hard organizing this edition. Monty, qui a été notre directeur pendant de nombreuses années, euh, s'est dévoué encore cette année pour faire euh, avec Avonlea, uh, l'organisation de ce festival. You haven't heard the last thing about Monty, however, so um, thankfully, because he's going to reappear on our program later this week. So, uh, <laughs> He's okay with me seeing these things. We're going to regret his leaving, but uh, the legacy that he leaves with us, and he's still pretty much alive, um, <laughs> is great. Um, avant d'aller plus loin, je dois reconnaître que ce terrain, ce territoire, est celui des Algonquins Anishinaabe. We are on a land unceded, which is that of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Um, we happen to have a poet laureate this year, Albert Dumont, who is from that very people. And he was featured uh, just a couple of days ago. Albert Dumont, qui est le poète laureat anglophone cette année pour uh, la ville d'Ottawa, appartient à ce peuple Algonquin Anishinaabe, et il était au programme ne serait-ce qu'il y a deux jours dans notre festival. Euh, je me dois aussi de vous rappeler, mais vous avez l'air tous de vous y conformer, qu'il faut qu'on porte le masque. We all have to wear the mask throughout the performance, but you all seem to be very obedient. Um, and uh, I also want to say that this event would not happen without the many volunteers, uh, some of whom are in this room, who contribute to the organization. Les bénévoles qui nous aident euh, ont toujours été et continuent d'être euh, essentiels à l'organisation de, de ce festival. De même que les mécènes, les organismes qui nous aident financièrement, the uh, numerous funders, I need to recognize them, uh, they're from the three levels of government, uh, the city of Ottawa, of course, uh, Trillium Foundation from Ontario, the Ontario Art Council, the Canada Council, and the Department of Canadian Heritage uh, are the main funders of our organization. Voilà. Maintenant, je passe à la partie de la séance pour laquelle vous êtes venus. I need to introduce our first poet, who is Martine Odette. Martine Odette va nous lire ses poèmes en français. She's going to read her poems in French. She's from Montreal. She lives in Montreal. But some of her poems have been translated in many languages. Can't remember exactly which ones, but there's Spanish and there's English. And if you look for uh, Martine Odette on our website, you'll find some of her poems translated in English. 
She is a well-known poet in uh, Quebec. She started uh, publishing almost 20 years ago, no, 30 years ago, I can't count, almost 30 years ago, and she's received numerous awards. Parmi les prix très nombreux qu'elle a reçus, uh, je me permettrai de mentionner le prix Alain Grandbois. Alain Grandbois uh, Prize is one of the main uh, prizes in Quebec. Um, she also received the Prix, the Grand Prix Québécois de, du Festival de Trois-Rivières. Festival de Trois-Rivières is the main francophone poetry festival in North America. Uh, and she received the, the uh, just a couple of years ago, or even last year, I think, the main uh, Grand Prix. Not least, she received just last year the Governor General's Award. Martin Leder received the Prix for the Poésie du Gouverneur General. You know, sans doute, que c'est demain qu'on saura qui est son ou sa successeur. Tomorrow we'll know who succeeds Martin Leder because tomorrow the GG announces the literary prizes, literary awards, I should say. The poetry of Martin Leder has been called minimalist. Elle a un style épuré, avec une grande économie de moyens, je pourrais dire une, une modestie de moyens, qui est un adjectif modestie qui correspond aussi à sa personnalité, si je peux me permettre de la flatter de, ce, de cette façon. Euh, dans son écriture euh, simple, directe, éthérée, on retrouve les qualités d'une grande maîtrise de la parole, de la langue. Elle euh, va maintenant nous lire ses poèmes. I'll leave the mic to Martin Odet. Bonsoir, good evening. I'm very happy to be here. Merci beaucoup pour euh, l'invitation. Je vais lire euh, dans ce livre qui a reçu euh, le prix du gouverneur général, euh, La Société des cendres, suivie des lames entières. Ça a été publié aux éditions du Norrois. Alors, je commence par euh, des poèmes de la partie La Société des cendres. Lorsque se replient les panneaux du monde, tout ce qui a disparu, tout ce qui est resté, n'a plus trouvé place, est tombé de son nom. Cette suite du ciel sur mes manteaux d'écriture, un noir léger, crois-tu que je l'ignore? Ne pense pas à la mort, pense à la mort qui se soucie de toi, de l'autre amour, en milliers d'espèces. En moi, hors de toi, partir émane du vin, échappe au départ. Pas même la maison de ne jamais parler, pas même la vision des chats de nulle part. Je ne bouge que le temps de ta présence. C'est terrible, un battement. Détaché de l'air, se détacher en chiffres ou en énigmes, comme si naître et comme naît la frayeur. Dormir dans la gorge d'un rêve, ou manière d'étreinte te faire sauter l'image en morceaux froids et soudains. Ce qui se tait écoute. J'ignore mon pourrissement. J'ouvre le point du petit lys. Plusieurs étoiles se mangent le cœur. À marcher dans le noir, qui pardonne Un monde en menu monnaie, la lune dénonçant ma présence, je fais l'arbre 
l'arbre déjà, pour que ce soit la raison. Certaines langues à saisir, puis le dos animal ailleurs, il est question d'ailleurs. Ce matin, rien ne peut être. La nuit, ainsi la nuit n'a pas tenu aussi peu. La nuit est un mystère où s'en n'a pas. Heure d'étoile, mais pour elle-même, comme elle dénude. Après ce rouage, naître livre le début au dos du jour. J'ai, je n'ai rien pour faire tomber mes os dans la lumière du dehors. À peine un corps qui tourne à vide, une langue sautant au bout d'une corde, je donne l'heure de petites dents, le dur midi des choses dans la bouche. Ne voir que les ressemblances Lors d'un grand amour Où tout nié des formes noyées dans la lumière J'ai des outils de présence Une façon de disparaître Sans la disparition Fixer sa mort Avec les clous d'une seule douleur Dire pourquoi l'ombre, pourquoi les chevilles de fiction. J'ai le cœur sans détail. Chaque prière s'étonne de Dieu. Pas à dire, mais à craindre les choses ciblant le corps rendu au tableau d'affichage. J'ai taillé les ailes si bleues. Parfois de petits seins m'attrapent au vol. Est-ce une image claire du ciel Tout poème qui va en lui-même brûle sur l'ampoule de ses fins. Il y a jamais et a jamais fait place nette comme en plein cœur l'air le ciel franchi ce peu est fil de fer accroché à un clou ou double fond rayé n'était que du miracle des brûlures vives à l'oreille demandez pourquoi les mains et respirer, et faire vœu à l'abri du vivant, là où jadis nous vivions. Cet instant si vide, protège-le. Donne-lui les clés d'une chambre qui n'existe pas. Des paquets d'épaules, de nuques, de nerfs, tels des linges pendus aux fenêtres. C'est l'heure du soleil brûlant sa blancheur. La mort, est-ce une pensée? Il est tard pour les fantômes et pour ma tête sous le bras, ma tête à faire le tour de cette lune où vient boire la nuit que je ne sais pas. Ai-je cédé au sommeil qui t'expose, à l'instant qui me sépare du monde Ce qui résiste éclaire, fait scintiller les arbres, le mouvement des arbres. Vivre, est-ce parler du cœur 
est revenu la nuit avec le sexe à cibler, à chiffrer les détails d'un calque si léger. Je me suis pressé contre elle, et du ciel, j'ai retiré les eaux. Parole zéro, le beau métier. Mais avant, faut-il craindre ce qui n'est pas cherché? It's a whole new and beautiful experience. Thank you very much. And now, Abonnez. Thank you, Dave. And thank you, Hubert. I was going to ask, actually, comment dit-on ethereal en français, because that reading was delicious and perfect. Thank you so much, Maltin, for being here tonight, and thank you all for being here. It's such a thrill and a treat to have everyone back here at our home that knocks after so long being away. I know things are a little bit different than usual, but this is truly fantastic for me, and I, I hope it's equally fantastic for you this evening. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce our second reader for the evening, Rob Winger. Uh, Rob is the author of four collections of poetry, including Moybridge's Horse, uh, which was a Globe and Mail Best Book, a CBC Literary Award winner, and a finalist for the Governor General's Literary Awards, the Trillium Book Award for Poetry, and the Ottawa Book Award. His latest collection, It Doesn't Matter What We Meant, asks us to own up to our, inherited, our own inherited context our own luck or misfortune, and our own ways of moving through each weekday. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Rob Winger to the stage. It's a pleasure to take my mask off. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thank you very much uh, for having us here uh, and organizing this and all the work, especially behind the scenes that goes into this. <clears throat> uh, reading in Ottawa always feels a, a bit like a writerly homecoming, so I'm especially pleased to be here. So uh, I'll start with the first poem in the new book. Um, and uh, there's a, a bit of thinking about outer space throughout this book from a very lay person's perspective. I'm not even close to being an astrophysicist. Uh, and this one uh, and a, a couple other poems meditate on Voyager 1, which is, hopefully you know, was launched in the 70s and is the uh, human-made object that's furthest from Earth and keeps going and does all, all these amazing things, so I mention it here. So this poem is called A Dozen Morning Translations. When I talk, again, about Voyager 1, out there, lake stays still, street lights trimming our easy views of Ursa Major. This is before the sun got stuck, with now felled emerald ashes, pocket waterfalls, concrete, all of it beyond out of sight crack houses, later bulldozed, past the now closed downtown mall, the neglected first class gallery, the industrial circuit board that held up the edge of a fiery iced up lake. From here, these flames, apartment buildings high, seemed brightest. We watched them oxidize into Irish castle moss rot, 19th century bricks eroding into heritage pockmarks, into chickenpox scar pits. From here, there's only light. From here, coke, slag, ballast. Two. My basement is dirt packed is limestone crumble. My basement is damp and dark, the chain swaying from its single bulb impossible to locate. My basement stairs lined with fishing gear fixed to walls painted sky blue. My basement crawl space. My basement lit finally by that bulb to reveal abandoned on the packed earth snakeskins and trapped mice broken rotors, the furnace a hulking hidden family secret, its oil drum outside distant, behind the shed where we pee when the bathroom's occupied, where the pipes terminate in septic beds, where we bury family pets with crosses, where none of the trees were planted but grew their own roots before us. The basement window caked with dirt, 
The basement past the winter pantry, packed with bottled potatoes and pears. The basement stairs down to skin and chain and earth and limestone crumble. This is a creepy basement. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so I'll, I'll move sort of, uh, sort of from one kind of subterranean place to across the world to a different spot. So. Uh, this, this little piece is set in uh, Kongwa Island, where I lived for a little while, like 20-something years ago. Uh, at the time, being young and uninformed about everything, I didn't understand the island is totally surrounded by North Korea and that the river's mined, etc. Uh, I've stolen a couple of things here, <laughs> including a title of a book by Adrian Rich. Uh, and there's also an epigraph from the Evening Chorus by Helen Humphrey, so the epigraph is this. I've always thought that the miracle of birds is not that they fly, but that they touch down. So it's called Kangwa Haibun. 400 feet in the seaward air, we walked this island's thin avenue folded against shore. We've lost that sense of wind now, but we know the island's name, its next door airport. We landed there, remember, in another life. Just north, just east, are the hidden missile installations we've since read about back home. But there are also temples and chili peppers spread on blankets readying for winter kimchi pots. There are rice fields like stained glass uniforms expertly arranged around darkness. Up there, we believed in the old west wind. We walked a fine dirt path perhaps three feet wide and found relief. The relief was a giant cliffside Buddha it was facing cumulus clouds that were out over the water. It might have been a month or a millennium old, the Buddha. It might have been the answer we wanted to build. It might have been that old dream of a common language. We swung our arms to signal youth, aimed our film cameras at the rock's robes. We focused and clicked. We watched and listened. We thought about the postcards we'd mail to Ontario relatives, but we only thought so far. The path was too narrow not to pay attention to. The tree drop was gorgeously sheer. The bamboo apex was where every language stopped. The clay pots back in the city were set against this salted wind. The stone relief looked right past us. Years later, the chisel that made this is still working. We can hear it. And we're still climbing. We've sweated through our undershirts. Step, trail. Buddha, mouth, bamboo, breeze, relief, worn gravel, tethered updraft, prints. There are birds here, none of them alight. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, I got a couple more. Um, so I thought I would read this one. Uh, this The book has a a bunch of sort of English to English translations and uh, the sort of uh, original texts that I'm doing cover versions of are either feminist poems I really admire or sort of misogynistic fairy tales. Um, and, uh, but given that, <laughs> so that sounds funny, but given that uh, uh, last week uh, Phyllis Webb died just a, just a little while ago, so this is a sort of my cover version of her, her book Naked Poems, which I've loved for a long time. Um, so, uh, thanks to, to Phyllis for this. Um, so, it's called Apple Sweet. Sweet one, you say. The Ishtar Gate is just another shoreline. The closed curtains of a hotel tryst. Its ivory trim. Purpled thighs, angry ceiling spiders. Our sheets are still damp. Will we remember your marbled eye, your blouse sunlit on the tiles? Will we promise sequels? Will we pretend we didn't know? There aren't enough bees for the roses, so pollen covers every pistol. The tide signals full moon, blood. Its waves could flatten any mansion, but your dress is no white shell. Let's let that hilltop boulder roll back down to where our tangled legs make perfume. The fish queer. You can't stomach the sight of two men kissing, holding hands, being in the same bed together with their child? I mean, a Toronto film critic once wrote he couldn't review queer films because he couldn't make it through the kissing scenes. 
It's here I realize I'm more of a man than most anyone I've met. Enter Fred Waugh. In Waugh Wen's living room for Sunday Poetics class, where we're reading through Waugh's opus, Scree, and he's appeared in person a week early. Class plans have changed. To witness a man I would like to become, model myself after, so rare, at first I didn't know what I was seeing, responding to. The ease of this poet in their body, how he stood, sat, the ground his. He set the pace and things slowed down considerably. This slowness brought everything into an immediate present. It was all in the listening. I have never witnessed anyone more attentive as a listener. Room for response, engagement, wonderment, consideration, exchange, conversation. It's like going from Toronto warp speed, reactive mode, to zero. All of a sudden, people were in their bodies, also listening, also attentive, Fred modeling this possibility for everyone in the room. I was so taken with how he did man. To his surprise, I told him as much. He, never leaving the ground, received my kindnesses. On our way out, I said, Fred, guess what rhymes with wah? What's that, Kirby? Wah! <laughs> I know him throwing him a big kiss, laughing from our bellies. This book is primarily about what keeps me here, what's brought me here, what keeps me here. And it's been uh, many, many queer poets. Is there anyone more disarmingly gay than James Schuyler? For me, he's the gay emoji of my contemporaries, and there's no one more fun to read. You can hear Queen in every sequin. Schuyler's a garden veranda queen living in New York City. Just imagine Ashbery, O'Hara, and him sharing an apartment in Hell's Kitchen when people actually conversed. This is a play that screams to be written. Jimmy's letters, diary, and poems are all equally scrumptious. God, I would love to play Skylar drooling over Joe Brainerd. I miss you, dearie, dearie. Dear Frank, would you turn down my bed, please? And have you noticed that when my life is troubled, it's you I turn to invariably? I hope you like it, and I hope I don't make you feel like an old pillow. This time, I'll try to remember not to leave the milk out of the fridge. Everybody, dear, love, angel. What's this about you walking into a gallery in Rome and meeting someone? Hmm? I can't wait to hear it all. Tell me everything. Schuyler could have had his own pay-per-view version of Poets Untucked. And girl, we'd all be talking, talking, and watching, and dying to get on. It took me way too long to love my queen. But she's a penis person who wanted to have sex with men. And the archetypes of men had differing scales at differing times. My window in particular valued those who were our straight acting, the hashtag of the day, or not too gay, meaning not effeminate or less than masculine. So she adapted this sort of imprecise butch queen that could present more male if called upon. Possibly the most joyous of things entering my unanticipated 60s is I can be Kirby, full on. And while I still present male, her non-binary has won her heart. I look forward to a gender fluidity not based upon the falsities of what came before it. 
Please, please, dear ones, exceed us. This is from Sadiqa. She made this for me. Her book was part of the series, uh, Alphabet, Alphabet, which is up for the Governor's General right now. Stunning work. And then there was Frank's cock. I mean, I know that sizes and everything, but it just seemed to fit, you know? As soon as I got him inside me, I felt like I was home. Like for the first time in my life, I knew what home was. That's my Bloom from Frank's cock. I'll never trust any man who doesn't wonder, know, how they themselves are entered during intercourse. On my knees, at the catacombs Montreal, every porn star and trick that turned me on has a slight resemblance to the scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz. On my knees, here, being gay didn't fuck me up. It was the world and the fact that the world wasn't gay that sucked. On my knees, suddenly, he inter interrupted my reverie by expressing my own words. There is no greater pleasure than that of surprising a man by giving him more than he expects. The litanies of gushing. No that joy is rarer, more difficult, and more beautiful than sadness. Once you make this all-important discovery, you must embrace joy as a moral ob obligation. Andre Gide in his journals. Don't you think Jesus masturbated? Two takeaways from the church, idolatry and praise, served me well. Jesus was a hottie. What are all these T's doing up on the walls? Pointing to a crucifix. Don't correct her. And tell me we're there. Are we really there? Are we finally going to stop killing this queen over and over again? No more blood sacrifices, Jesus. Emergency at St. Mike's, a rainbow flag in the waiting room. Fuck your rainbow flag like that fucking means anything. Perversion is the church and state. What matters, an eternity of damnation to one who is found in a second, an infinite joy. Charles Baudelaire. Glory is in the flesh. Thanks for joining me tonight. Cockland, Cockland, Cockland! I walk into the LGBT Community Center on 13th in New York City, and a lovely receptionist looks up. You're here for the Keith Herring washroom. It's clearly written all over my GWM of a certain age tourist face. Right at the top of those steps, enjoy. Can you imagine a better welcome? Me neither. Mind you, she knows how to find a men's room. The vibe of this place is gay-gay, much like the remarkable 519 up the street from me on church in Toronto, an old-school building retrofitted to the tits with clean, wide stairwells, hallways, queer art plants, fully accessible meeting rooms, a cafe, a gated patio, workspaces, offices for a plethora of community organizations, services, and the nonprofit queer book emporium BGSQD, clearly a hangout for regs and newbies who feel at home if home is gay central. Not nearly as cruisy as the village once was. A veneer of politeness accompanies looks these days. Open cruising has been shunned for some time now. Desires be damned. There is nothing quite like a gaggle of gays whose voices, laughter, carry freely throughout an old school building. I've never heard that before. My belly smiles. Soon I reach the top of the steps, enter Herring's glory land. 
It's candy land for cock lovers. I've always loved the graffiti in washrooms, useful community billboard of sorts. A variety of personals and promises show hard for a BJ, meet me here at three, where's the glory holes, kill fags. It captures the decades of public washroom sex where I found men of all classes, races, ages, preferences, desires, all looking for variations of the same thing, taking care of business, daily. And darlings, the men's room on the second floor is busy. Hundreds of orifices filled with cocks, balls, all shapes and sizes, entire mazes of flesh interconnected, engaged, the promise of sexual longing sought, fulfilled, one continuous bacchanalia of rapturous phallic delights, shared connections of a sexual tribe. The way herring portrays the male genitals reveals both unceasing, voracious, and submerging desire, and is an allegory for nirvana announces so-and-so from the sex is, life, sex is life is sex. Keith, Keith is such a gay boy with a beautiful cock himself. His images, persona, always invited play. He titled this mural, Once Upon a Time, in 1989. And quite tellingly, this was one of the last public works he chose to complete before he died of AIDS less than a year later. It was to mark the 20th anniversary of Stonewall. He had his pop shop. He could have done anything. He chose what was central to him, his activism. He wanted this to be his memorial, to exist in a men's room, his playground to immortalize the joys found. As Mark Doty's Homo Will Not Inherit discovers, no one needs your eternity. This failing city's radiant as any will ever know, paved with oily rainbows, charred gates, jeweled with tags, swoops of letters over letters indecipherable as anything written by desire. I'm not ashamed to love Babylon's scrawl. How could I be? It's written on my face as much as on these walls. This city is inescapable, gorgeous, and on fire. I have my kingdom, New York, my Babylon. Do you think you'll die of AIDS? Paul asks, as I scan the new names added to the AIDS memorial behind the 519. Tom, Bernard, Andrew, James. Can you believe people are bitching about guys having sex here at night? I reply, touching George, Robert. Hell, they'd be thrilled knowing that this shit's still happening. I don't know what will be worse. Surviving AIDS, surviving loss. Why does this one die and another not? How then shall we live? I enter a trick's apartment. It's dark. My eyes adjust first to his eyes. Smile. Kirby, I want you to know, once these lesions reach my face, it's over. I'm too vain. Michael. Jimmy. Claude. Did you hear? Nobody even knew he had it. Not his family, his boyfriend, nobody. Jeff, Kelly, Gino. Ran into a meal piggybacking Michael on Young Street, blasted out of their gourds on their way to. Have fun, you two. The last time seeing either. 
A birthday party for Brenda Bryan, free pouring in a kitchen filled with raucous laughter and chatter, and suddenly a woman screams, You're all gonna fucking die for fuck's sake. I don't see how any of you could be laughing. At home, Scott dances naked in the hallway again, singing Donna Summer, sees me, smiles, blows kisses, entreats me to join. There's only one way I made it through. I stopped counting. Thanks for coming tonight. One moment. I have two more. I don't know if you're familiar with John Wiener's, John Wiener's brilliant post poet out of Boston. His, there was a selected that was put out by Wave Books called Supplications. It's simply a must have. On being lonely, poet John Wieners wrote a positively sublime, recognizably haunting poem called The Loneliness. It is so sad. It is so lonely. I felt younger after doing him, and when I looked in the mirror, my hair was rumpled. I smoothed it and rooted for someone else or wanted to satisfy myself. Almost seven, no hope left. How can a man have pride without a wife? I spit him out on the floor, immensely relieved after ejaculating, imagining myself up my lover's ass, he coming by himself, looking out the window for no reason except to soothe myself. I shall go to the bookstore and pretend nothing happened, enormously gratified, feeling like a girl stinking beneath my clothes. What's going to happen to all these men when they don't have someone to look after them? My mother asked at her first pride parade. Dear God, I bought into that whole it's somehow wrong to be lonely thing. Like when pharmaceutical companies had to introduce Japanese people to the malady of depression before they released antidepressants in Japan. Until then, it was simply melancholy, a slight reverence towards the human condition or how American evangelicals flooded Ugandans with their hate-filled beliefs saying all homosexuals should be killed. I am alone, but I'm not alone all the time. I enjoy being single. I'm not tied to obligation or the idea that there's something wrong with me. Oh, for your responsibility, settling down. That's the absolute straightest white shit I've ever heard. Lonely boy, girl, be your lonely ass self. No less a life, my queer life, surrounded, enveloped, engulfed by beauty. Gay, gay, last night a DJ saved my life. Nancy Wilson, tonight may have to be and last me all of my life. I'm 62, this is the first day I have loved my life. Fuck, I could have died without knowing this. Thank you, Saturday Night Cock God. Monty, thank you for the invite. And thank you for your extraordinary work here. Verse Fest is known everywhere. It is the festival to attend. I am grateful for this opportunity. Congratulations, new director. Martine, your voice reached my pelvic floor. Thank you so much. Rob, thank you. Oh, and Amy at Palimpsest, thanks for taking the risk. And thank you, family, for watching tonight. I am a professional homosexual. I made my entire living, my entire life, as a homosexual. I've never wanted nor known anything other than being 
homosexual. It's been the entirety of my life. I'm not saying it was all that gay, but it has indeed been grand. It's a sweet thing looking back and feeling, no knowing, that I wouldn't have changed it for. Mind you, it's Tuesday, and I'm stoned and listening to the Smiths. Fifteen minutes with you, I wouldn't say no. Has a single voice graced my bedroom more, slayed me, saved me. You can pin and mount me like a butterfly. Gym socks, briefs, big fucking Belinda Carl blue Old Navy sweater, or Robert Smith, depending on the night. Oh, meet me at the fountain. A time when being gay meant being a fag who wanted to. There's lots of things I know I want. But the thing I know most about this lifetime is being a homosexual. I'm certain it's the same for you, wondering if you're homosexual. Or not. Or if everybody knows or thinks they know, and fuck them. Sing me to sleep. Sing me to sleep. I'm tired and I. I want to go to bed. The thing is, my being a homosexual has brought me here. This very moment, to you. It could have been different. I could have not been. But she insisted. She simply must. I would have missed you. so much, Kirby. Um, I've been working with Verse Fest for, I guess this is my sixth year with the festival, and normally there's a point at some point throughout the week, normally it's day five or six, where I, I kind of hit like an emotional wall, um, listening to like 60, 70, 80 poets in such a short amount of time gives you a bit of a hangover after a while, a delightful one, but still... Um, it doesn't usually happen on opening night, but here we are. I'm feeling very emotional. <laughs> uh, I want to thank all three of our poets this evening. Um, it's been so touching to have everyone here back in the space. I can't tell you how much it means to me. Uh, it's such a relief, and I'm so thrilled, and I look forward to the rest of the in-person events that we have uh, throughout the rest of this week, and also the ones that we continue to have online. Uh, we have a spectacular event starting in just 40 minutes, um, streaming from our website, featuring Kinesia, Lubrin, and Anne Carson. Uh, I invite you all to tune in if you can this evening, and if not, you can check back anytime throughout the week or after to check it out. Uh, and I once, I once again want to thank uh, all of our poets. If we could just have another round of applause tonight. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. I look forward to hopefully seeing you again soon, whether it's this year, next year, 2023. We'll continue to be here. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you.